Welcome everyone to preparing ArcGIS Online content for the public. I'm Kelly Juro Wilcox. This is. Uh, I'm Ian Wittenmeyer. Thanks for joining us. Yep. Uh, we both work with ArcGIS Online on the online team, and we're going to go a little bit through um, how to look at your content and how to get it um, accessible and best practices for sharing it with the public. Um, so, this is our agenda. We're going to talk about um, interactive web apps some data sources, um, some visualization strategies, and then sharing and embedding. So to start off with, um, this little graphic I made uh, using our best icono iconography about um, paper maps and what it used to take to actually um, get maps and share them with the, with the public. So you used to have quite a few trees, create some paper, um, actually make them, distribute them to, um, to some users, and then have everyone have an individual map. Um, so that's kind of how you went about sharing your maps with the public. You had to think about how you were going to actually get the paper maps, um, who you needed to distribute it, and you literally saw the people and either gave them the maps or sent them via the mail. So what we're talking about uh, is a term I've coined the post-paper era, um, where we're actually using the internet um, and computers to share our maps. Um, with this, there's a lot of different things that we need to think about uh, for resources, distribution, and your audience. So resources, things like how many servers, um, what is the data that you need to have in order to support um, uh, the web mapping content that you have. Distribution, do you want to share with everyone? Do you want to share with a few specific people? Are you going to embed your app in a web page? Are, you gonna, are people going to see it on a desktop computer? Um, or is it just really for a few people? And then who's your audience? Is it the general public, or is it um, some really specific people? This comes up a lot, uh, especially this year during hurricane season and wildfire season. We had a lot of maps that needed to get created and shared with everyone really, really quickly. Um, so these are kind of some of the considerations that you're going to want to think about when designing your maps. So if we think about how a web map or a web mapping app is created, um, there's really three main components. So we've got the data. So those are usually your feature layers, your data sources. Um, you've got a web map. So that's where you author your web map. You do the symbolization, the visualization. And then you've got your web application, where you can add some tools, interact, and des design the user experience for your user. If you take one step back, there's a little bit more information, like um, you can create interactive apps from web maps, web scenes, and groups of items. So that might be many, many applications, many, many apps in an application like a gallery application. So the first thing to start thinking about when we're looking at resources is what kind of data you're using. So there's two main data types that are hosted on ArcGIS Online. We've got feature layers and tile layers. Feature layers are really great um, layer types. They render your actual feature data. And um, you can add, the, the request that you get back from the server has all of the geometry on it. Tile layers are actually um, small pre-rendered images of your data. So if we take a look at this app, we're going to see the performance differences um, between a tile layer and a feature layer. So as this loads, you can see that on the uh, left, oh. Did you lose it? It's all right. I have this really great trick. You're back. You okay. OK. We'll try this again. So where it says tiles, you'll see that there's a tile layer, which will draw really, really quickly. We've got some pre-rendered images um, that will display on top of the data, on top of the base map. You can see in, on the uh, feature side that all of the data will come in um, as it, the, you get the response from the server. Both have pop-ups, so you can see the information underneath the data. But one draws a lot quicker. So if you've got a lot of data that uh, you want to be drawing quickly, tile layers are probably the way that you want to go. 
If we take a look at what the requests actually look like that the web application <coughs> needs to take into consideration, um, if we take a look at the actual feature service request, you can see how much data that we're getting back and the web application needs to interpret in order to actually display it on, um, in the application. If we take a look at the tile request, it's really just this tile. We get a bunch of different tiles that are coming back from the server and displayed over top of the maps. That's why we're seeing the big difference in performance. So if you are building an application for the public, think about how much data, how many individual points, how many vertices you're trying to get the application to render on its own um, if it is a feature layer. If, you, um, if it's a little bit more complex, you're going to want to take a look at the tile layers. Ian's going to talk about subscriber content. Okay. You're Go ahead and switch. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, so in this case, I've been making a map that shows migration of mako sharks in the Pacific Ocean. And what I'd like to do is punch up my map a little bit by adding some data from the Living Atlas. Uh, so in this case, I've got a time-aware layer. And what I want to do is show the shark migration relative to sea surface temperature. So if I add a layer, and I'm going to search Living Atlas layers and look for sea surface temperature. It's right here. <clears throat> and then as I start to browse this layer, I can see the badge at the bottom informing me that this is subscriber content. So this is some of the high quality cartographic information products that are built into the Living Atlas that I can use from, from ArcGIS Online. So I'll add that to my map. <clears throat> and since I'm, I'm using the ocean base map, I'd like to apply a little bit of a transparency to this layer so that the, the uh, ocean labels can kind of come through along with some of the texture. And then at that point, I'm pretty happy with, with my map. I'm going to save it. And then I'll start to share it. In this case, I'm going to share it with a, a configurable app. I'll start by sharing the map with everyone because that's my, my ultimate target audience is to share it with everyone. I'll choose create an app. And what I'd like to do is use a time aware application to let other people interact with the animation in the same way that, that I'll be doing. I'll give my application item a name and then I'll enter the configuration panel for this application. Uh, so what will happen now is uh, because my map has subscriber content in it, uh, on the general tab, there'll be a new interface that lets me uh, essentially create a mechanism by which my end users can access this map without requiring them to sign in. So uh, there's a little checkbox down here that says enable subscriber content. I'm going to turn that on. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to choose not to apply any rate limiting because there's no credits accrued by, by using this layer. And then at that point, I can save it. And if I launch it, I'll be able to then consume that map myself, or I'll be able to consume it uh, in an incognito browser. So this is just my way of essentially testing that the application works for the general public. Now, if I were to go back to my app, and have a situation where that proxy uh, that facilitates accessing the subscriber layer wasn't created. If I refresh my application, it's going to prompt me to sign in. And this is really what we want to avoid uh, subjecting end users or uh, end users within our organization or specifically end users within the anonymous general population from having to, to deal with this interface. So that's the way that you would do it in a simple configurable app. I'm going to save that again. And then uh, what I can also do is, let's say I want to embed this in a website. I think Kelly mentioned that earlier. Uh, in this case, what I'd like to do is, let's see. I'm going to embed it. And for that context, I'm going to turn off the title. And actually, now I want to leave the title on. It looks better with it. 
<clears throat> then I'm, I'll grab the URL of my application. And I have a really kind of basic website that already has uh, iframe code in it for embedding this application. I'm going to provide my URL um, to the source uh, of the iframe. And then oops. I'm going to go to my website. In this case, uh, originally I had a gallery, but when I refresh, we should see my time aware application. And you can see I'm, I'm anonymous. I've authored this map. I've created this situation where it can be consumed from the public either as a standalone application or embedded within a website. Now, that's how you can do it through uh, one of the standard configurable apps. Uh, this workflow is also supported in Web App Builder. Uh, so, slightly different experience for, for creating the proxy that allows users to access this. In Web App Builder, I'll go to the Attribute tab and click Subscriber Content. Uh, and in this case, it's detected the layer that support or that, that requires a subscriber, uh, sorry, a subscription. I'll enable the proxy here. Web App Builder also supports the ability to do rate limiting. And then when I save that, it will also be uh, accessible to the public. Um, last thing I want to show is uh, Story Map. So this is Story Map Journal. Same workflow. Uh, I've authored that same map. I'm going to use it in the context of Story Map Journal. When I add my first section, I'm going to select this shark migration map that we've been looking at. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I'll paste in uh, some text that's on my clipboard for the side panel. And um, the story map builder is checking the map to see if it's ready to share with the public. And, and in this case, it's reporting some issues. So when I click fix, it's going to bring up this share dialog. And it's warning me that there's, sub sub that there's subscriber content in my map. In this case, I'm just going to click confirm. Uh, on the back end, that's doing that same process of creating a, a basic proxy for this layer that can be accessible from this application. And then at that point, I'll be able to view the story both signed in and if everything worked correctly, anonymously. So that's really all I had to show for my demo, just being able to take subscriber content from the Living Atlas and share it with the public through the lens of a few different types of applications. And I'll send it back to Kelly for some other considerations. All right. Thanks, Ian. So Ian just showed us how to share specific content um, that we host in ArcGIS Online with the public. Um, sometimes when you're sharing your application, you do want to share with the public. Sometimes you don't want to share with the public. And it really depends on kind of what the purpose of your app is. So with ArcGIS Online, there's a simple sharing model um, that will be reviewed in the next session. Um, where you can share either with groups, with the organization, or with everyone, um, depending on what the purpose is. So is it a, a viewing application so that your users can actually view some layers that you've put out there, um, like evacuation zones? Or is it something where you're looking to crowdsource some data and have your citizens actually collect data for you? When you're doing this, you want to think about who you're set providing the data to and how you're configuring your data. Um, so we're going to take a look at a crowdsourcing example where I've configured this whale watch layer. As you can see, I can edit the layer. I can add information into it. And say when I've actually seen, um, when, I've, when I've seen a specific type of whale. What I want to do with this is create, turn it into a simple geoform app so I can share it with the public and have users collect um, and submit locations when they actually view whales. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to hit share, and I'm going to decide to share with everyone. And as you can see, when I'm sharing with everyone, I have this message comes, coming up that says, these layers uh, may not be visible because they may not be shared in the same way. Do I want to do this? And you'll see that there's this yellow um, box underneath that says, this layer is enabled for editing. Sharing it with Sharing it with everyone means um, you can edit it. 
So you want to make sure that that's really your intent um, when you're sharing editable layers. For this application, I do want to share, and I want to share it with the public. I want to do some crowdsourcing. So I'm going to say update sharing and go ahead and create an app. There are a lot of scenarios where you don't want to share editable layers. So let's say you've got some data where you're going to be um, editing specific locations, like shelter locations, um, or updating data, and you've got a small group of users that you want to be updating the data, and you've got the rest of your users that you want to be viewing the data. You can set that up with the same layer, um, but not share the editable version uh, publicly. So let's say we didn't want to share, um, we wanted to create a version of this app for just viewing the data that was collected. I'm going to go ahead and use future, feature layer views to set up a display only layer. So with this, I'll go to my Whale Watch 2018 layer, create a view layer, give it a name so I know that it's a display layer, and I can go ahead and share this and create this layer. What I'm going to do once the layer view is created is set it up so and ensure that there's no editing enabled. So if I go here to the settings, scroll down to the editing settings, you'll see that editing is not enabled. What this means is I can share this layer publicly and ensure that no one's actually editing it. Um, so it's one of the ideal things that if you've got someone who's collecting data but then want to also display it, um, you set up this editable and display layer. And the last thing to kind of talk about is the tuning of a feature layer for high demand. So we've got caching set up in multiple uh, parts of ArcGIS Online. Um, one of them is this server-side caching. So if you want to be able to access some optimized requests for your feature services, you need to make sure that editing is disabled on the web map. Not on the web map, on the feature layer. You want to make sure that there's no filters on the layer and that it has less than 8,000 points or 2,500 vertices. If any of your data exceeds this, this is when you're probably going to want to make sure that you're using tile layers. Um, but if you meet these demands, then you can access some server-side caching, which will be more efficient when you're using feature layers. I think that's, yeah. Um, so one last thing I wanted to point out. Um, the workflows that I described and showed are presented uh, also in a blog called Using Liv Living Atlas Subscriber Content in Public Maps and Apps. And this blog actually goes into one additional workflow. So if you needed to do something like take a, a map service from the Living Atlas and you wanted just one of the feature layers, this blog will also walk you through how to create a, um, a how to register that layer as a secured service and embed credentials in it. Uh, which would also facilitate that same workflow of sharing content with um, the public without requiring sign-in. Uh, so I think with that, yeah. we'll open it up to any questions. Sure. How long, uh, the question was how long do the proxies last? So uh, by default, the proxy uh, does not have any rate limiting and it should last until uh, you go in and essentially uncheck the box to delete the proxy. So checking the box creates the proxy, applying a rate limit would modify the proxy, unchecking the box would delete it. So there's no other mechanism for deleting it outside of, uh, outside of the application. Any other questions? All right, thanks everyone. Thank you.